How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video on the Daily Baseball Report. We got a lot to go over today. Shohei Otani hit two home runs. LeBron James is now an owner of a Major League Baseball team, or at least part owner of a Major League Baseball team. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome back to the Daily Baseball Report. Coach Matt coming at you with another video where all we do is talk all things baseball, baseball news, anything related to baseball, and with all the coverage of Major League Baseball. We are on the road to 1K by opening day, so please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and smash the like button because it really helps the channel out and it helps the YouTube algorithm. We had Austin Hayes and Freddie Galvis hit back-to-back home runs we haven't seen too much of that this spring but i just it's so great to see when a team goes back to back the uh matt harvey also had uh, a pretty good outing he actually pitched four innings gave up five hits two uh two runs they were earned two runs they were earned he had four k's and he's dropped his era to 7.5 so i don't know if it's because he was pitching against the pirates or what but he actually didn't have that bad of a start. On the other side of the ball with the Pittsburgh Pirates, Bryant Hayes hit a home run, and he's their big prospect. I can't wait to watch this guy every day in Major League Baseball. He's going to be so much fun to watch. So keep an eye out for Bryant Hayes. Max Scherzer pitched really well today. He pitched four innings. He gave up two hits. He had seven Ks, and he dropped his ERA to 2.08. Ryan Zimmerman hit a home run for the Nationals, and Zimmerman is, is an interesting one because if he has a pretty big comeback year, the, the Nationals really are pretty scary. The, the NL East is going to be an incredible division to watch, just like the NL West between the Padres and Dodgers. The difference is it's going to be the Phillies, Mets, Nationals, Braves. All four of them are going to be pretty competitive. Wonder how that's going to go. The other side of the ball, the St. Louis Cardinals, Nolan Arenado went two for three, and so did Tyler O'Neill. Arenado did drive in a run, but Tyler O'Neill is hitting 500 with an OPS of 1.395. This guy is pretty good. I know it's spring training, but you can't deny that the stats are there. I know it's spring training, but this is the time of spring training where a lot of guys start getting cut. I know rosters kind of go from, you know, 90 guys to 45 guys, and then they drop from 45 to 30, 30 to 25, you know what I mean? Like, so the comp competition will be getting better, and we start seeing some of these numbers start to level off prior to the regular season. But something has to be said, when a guy is hitting 500, you got to kind of, you know, look up and see, hey, is this guy worth it? You know, what's going on here? Is he actually legit, or is this just... Kind of a flash in the pan. Ronald Acuna Jr. hit another home run today. I think he's hit three home runs in three straight games. Regardless, he's finally starting to see the ball. I think he's turning the page. He had a bad first two weeks of spring training, but in the last three games, he's had a home run every single game. He went one for one with two walks and a home run, which makes me see that he's starting to see the ball well. He's starting to swing them at hittable pitches rather you know than pitches out of the zone and he's he's definitely turned it around so excited to see Ronald Acuna hold up his 40 and 40 deal we'll see if it continues in the regular season Hunjin Rio of the Toronto Blue Jays pitched four innings gave up two hits had four Ks and his ERA is 1.5 so Ryu is doing his like he always does always has a strong start out of every season I don't think I've ever seen him have a bad beginning to a season he always has a really good beginning it's always that middle to the end of the year where he has a little bit of a you know not so consistent starts but he's doing exactly as he's done his entire career just a awesome competitor on the other side of the ball Matt Boyd pitched four innings he gave up three hits two runs one of the runs was earned one walk four k's and his ERA is now at two the question I have for you all today Will A.J. Hinch turn around the Detroit Tigers? Because everywhere he's been, he's been successful. I know that in Arizona, he did lose to the Dodgers at the end of the year. I remember that was the year that the Dodgers won. I think it was their first division championship, and they went and partied in the pool. I think that was his first year, with, and then he left and went to Houston. And then, obviously, he stole a World Series from the Dodgers in 2017. We all know that. And now he's in Detroit after his uh, suspended year last year of 60 games. It's just a slap on the wrist. The guy should have been suspended quite some time, but 
either way, that's just my opinion. But he is a good manager. Do you think he will turn the Detroit Tigers around? Do you think he'll make them competitive again? I think they're going to be somewhat decent this year. They're going to be sneaky, sneaky average. Comment below what you think about the Detroit Tigers hiring AJ Hinch and how, if he will turn that organization around. So, Michael Chavis hits a home run and the Red Sox lose, but they sort of win because reported today, LeBron James is going to be part of the Fenway Sporting Group and they own the Red Sox. So he is going to be now, LeBron is now going to be part owner of the Boston Red Sox. I wonder if Magic Johnson in LA had anything to do with him pushing him to be part of an organization such as the Red Sox. I just know that Magic had always wanted to be part of the Dodgers. He had been in LA for many years. He loves the Dodgers. He wanted to be a part of all that. So he was very fortunate to put together what he needed to, to become part of, you know, the face of the ownership group for the Dodgers. Interesting to see LeBron now going to Fenway Sports Group and he's going to be part owner of the Red Sox. Do you think him being part of this is going to allow players to wear his shoes, but obviously baseball cleats, in the game? Because right now, there's only a couple of players in the, in the shoe game in baseball. And you can't custom make shoes because it's against violation of uh, uniform policy, as we can see from Trevor Bauer. LeBron James is coming in and he's got a shoe line. Do you think there's going to be some sort of deal there? You got something to think about there. Something to think about. It looks like Domingo Herman is going to be the final starter for the New York Yankees. And he pitched wonderfully. He pitched four innings, gave up three hits, one walk. He had six Ks and his ERA in spring is zero. So I would have to say he's earned his spot. Granted... I know he has some off the field issues that need to be addressed, ironed out and worked on. But Debbie Garcia, the guy is electric. Now, does playing time manipulation, is that part of the equation here? Is it maybe we try out Domingo Herman, there's no sense in trying to push Debbie Garcia into the major leagues early or both? Interesting situation, but I do think Domingo Herman has rightfully owned up to winning the fifth starter spot for the New York Yankees. In the same game, Giancarlo Stanton went two for four with two RBIs and Aaron Judge went one for three. Those two guys, if they're on, the Yankees are scary. Man, they're scary good. Okay, Royals fans, what is what is with Danny Duffy? So he pitched four innings, had four Ks, and was lights out. Lights out. So what... What is his, he's, he's very good and then not very good and then very good and then not very good. Is this a spring thing? Is he, because I feel like every time I see him pitch, it's good start, bad start, good start, bad start, two good starts, two bad starts. What's his deal? Comment below. I want to know. Hunter Dozier went two for four with a run scored and Salvador Perez was two for two with a run scored, two RBIs, and he is hitting 455 with an OPS of 1.429. Awesome spring so far for Salvador Perez. The Battle of Chi Town took place. Eloy Jimenez went two for four with three RBIs. Jose Abreu went two for two with two runs, one RBI, two walks. On the other side of the ball, David Bodie had two hits. He was two for three with a run scored. And of course, getting to the topic of today, Shohei Otani. It is showtime. This guy is so good. He, first off, just flicked a wrist and hit a home run to the opposite field. Everyone knows if you hit a home run to the opposite field, you're locked in. And if you have power to the opposite field, you're just, you know, you've got all the tools. But not only does this guy have all the tools, this guy throws 102 miles an hour with movement. This guy is incredible. He's a generational talent. And I just, I wish and I hope that this guy stays healthy the whole year. Now, he hit a second home run similar to the first one. Fastball away, just flicked the wrist and hit it out. Off of Mike Lorenzen, this guy's another two-way player. He's not as good as Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani has just he is Showtime. Is that his nickname? I don't know what his nickname is, but that should be his nickname, Showtime. Really great. It's so great to watch this guy play. I grew up watching Albert Pujols, and he was incredible. But seeing a guy like Shohei Otani, who, who can throw the ball 102 miles an hour and have a filthy breaking ball, have one of the top sprint speeds in baseball, and then hit a home run from the left side to the opposite side of the field. 
That's pretty incredible. Wonderful. Shohei Otani, I got, I got to tip my cap to you. Shohei Otani is hitting 563 with a 1.68 OPS. So to go back to Shohei about how good this guy is, yes, I know it's spring training. I know, I know, I know. I'm going to hear it from all of you. But when he's hitting 560, you got to look and be like, whoa, what is going on here? This guy, the guy's electric. It, last year, he was still recovering. His body just wasn't healthy. This year, he's healthy. Look at him. He's doing a great job. Joe Adele seems to be fine after his uh, collision with the wall and his wrist, and he was taken out just as a precaution. He hit a home run in his return to the field. Speaking of healthy bodies and being able to perform like crazy, Corey Seager is so good. This guy, of course, in my opinion, I'm a Dodgers fan. In my opinion, Corey Seager is the best shortstop in baseball. Without a doubt, I think he's the best. Yeah, some people might say Lindor is the best shortstop. He's got better range. He's a switch hitter. He can switch hits for a hit for power. But look at Corey Seager. He is on track, like, like based off of what, he's, what you saw at the end of last year as his NLCS MVP, World Series MVP, and he just destroyed all of postseason baseball last year. He is going to have an MVP caliber season. I'm going to come out with an, a video where I have a projection on who's going to win it. He's on my projection list. I gotta, I, I'll got i do that video soon, I promise. In the last six games, Corey Seager has five home runs. In six games, he's five home runs. He's locked in. Every single one of his home runs was either to center field or opposite field. So you know this guy is dialed in and he's locked in. He's finally healthy. I ho wish and hope and pray that this guy stays healthy the entire season. So... Today, Corey Seager went two for two with two runs, two RBIs, one walk, and he's hitting 478 with an on-base percentage of 1.702. Just video game numbers. And Gavin Lux is having a sneaky good spring training. He went two for three with three runs scored, one RBI, and he's hitting 417 with an on-base percentage of 875. Blake Snell pitched for the San Diego Padres, he had three innings. He gave up one hit. He had two strikeouts, and he has a zero ERA. Blake Snell's really good. Here's if you watch and you see his ball, the ball has such good break on it. This guy's electric, and because he's electric, I decided to wear my San Diego Padres hat. And we'll go into my hat reference in just a moment. But first, we're going to talk about C.J. Abrams. He hit a grand slam for the Slam Diego Padres. This guy is one of their up and coming prospects. They're pretty high on this guy also. The San Diego Padres were so bad for so many years. All they did was just, just draft pick, draft pick, draft pick, draft pick, draft pick, draft pick. And every move they made, they were getting more draft picks in and getting more prospects in. So these guys, this is their time to shine. They've got nothing but incredible talent top to bottom, and I'm sure they've got a lot more prospects down there that are really good. As you can see from C.J. Abrams, it just goes to show that Preller with the Padres is doing a great job, just like uh, uh, Zaidi and Friedman did with the Dodgers. I know Zaidi's now with the Giants, and the Giants are going to be, they're setting themselves up to be competitive. But that being said, the NL West, I, I think they have NL West is the best division. And that does it for today's video. Please Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos that I post, and please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Hat reference. Okay, so I got this hat. I lived in San Diego for a little over a year, and I absolutely love San Diego. What a great place. But I got this hat on my birthday in 2019. The Dodgers beat the Padres in the 10th inning. It was awesome. What a great time. I took my girlfriend out to that game. It was just a wonderful experience. We sat uh, right behind home plate. It was just a great experience. And every stadium I go to, I buy a hat. And at the time, they were still the blue and white, you know, the blue and white uh, hat. And, and uh, I just didn't like the hat. I just liked their uh, their yellow and brown. I kind of like the old school colors with a lot of teams, more so than their newer school colors. Similar to like the Chicago Cubs, the White Sox. I like the old old style game look. And that's my way of preserving the old old game. So anyways, I got this hat when I was at that game. It still to this day is one of my fondest memories of Petco Park, uh, which is known as Dodger Stadium of the South. For those of you Padre fans who are watching. So Dodger Stadium of the South, I appreciate you. And uh, it's my favorite stadium. Out of all the stadiums in Major League Baseball, Petco Park by far is my number one stadium. It is an incredible place. If you haven't been, 
San Diego is an awesome city. I think it's the best city in America. I haven't been to every city in America, but I do think up to my point and all the places I've traveled, San Diego is the best city in America. Just LA sports is superior in every single way, without a doubt, 100% superior to all areas in all of California and in the United States and in Canada, if you count Canada. So that's my opinion. Fight me on it in the comment section below. Without further ado, we will see you tomorrow.